the early 20th century, Alfred Binet designed a test to identify students who might need extra assistance in school. Instead of writing an achievement test, which measures the skills and knowledge acquired during school, he developed an intelligence test, which was intended to measure the ability to think and reason rather than measuring accumulated knowledge. The Binet-Simon scale calculated mental age, an expression of cognitive ability in terms of the age at which a person typically reaches that level of mental capacity. So a six-year-old who performs as well as the average nine-year-old would have a mental age of nine. Later, Binet's original test was standardized. A standardized test ensures that testing and scoring conditions are consistent across test takers. It makes it possible to compare the performance of a test taker without other variables affecting the results. The resulting standardized test was named the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale, and it provides an intelligence quotient, or IQ score, that represents a person's reasoning ability. But even the creators of this early intelligence test knew that it had its limits, that intelligence is influenced by many factors and cannot truly be captured by a single test. Other researchers agreed. Dr. David Wexler was particularly troubled by the idea that the Stanford Binet test had been specifically designed for school children, making it invalid for calculating intelligence in other age groups. He designed the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale, or WACE, in order to attempt to compensate for this. The WACE 4, which was published in 2008, generates scores relating to four major areas of intelligence, verbal comprehension, perceptual reasoning, working memory, and processing speed. The WACE scoring is also standardized. It is designed to produce an average score of 100. Approximately two-thirds of the scores fall within the average intellectual range, which includes scores from 85 to 115. Extremely low scores reflect an intellectual disability, while extremely high scores reflect giftedness. In order to ensure that these tests are valid and reliable, test writers rely on psychometrics, the science behind measurement and mental capacities, abilities, and processing. Psychometric test design techniques make sure that tests have content validity, meaning that the tests measure the behavior or skill that it's intended to measure, and also that they have predictive validity, meaning that a score on one measure can predict the score on a related measure. If a significant percentage of students who scored very high on the LSAT failed out of law school, that test would have poor predictive ability. Test designers also need to be on the lookout for test bias which occurs when a test is comparatively more difficult for one group of people than it is for others. For example, test questions using colloquial sayings may disadvantage people who use English as a second language. Culture fair intelligence tests are designed to ensure that they do not favor any certain cultural background over another. Tests such as Raven's progressive matrices, which focus on nonverbal abstract reasoning, and tests focusing on processing speed and mental rotation may lead to fewer biases. Intelligence test scores produce relatively small differences across genders, race, or ethnic groups. In fact, variability within a group far exceeds variability between groups. However, stereotype threat can have a big impact on test results. Stereotype threat occurs when people feel concerned about confirming negative expectations about their group, and subsequently have a higher potential of performing poorly on tests because of this apprehension. When test conditions trigger awareness of negative stereotypes, like the idea that women aren't good at math, people tend to perform more poorly than they would otherwise. 